Hey people, it's Ed Fuel Cell Bud here. Today with a review of a shoe that the viewers have requested that I pick up. In a recent poll of over 2,700 viewers, the Fuel Cell Rebel V4 from New Balance was the choice with 50%. So I have grabbed a pair with my own Earth credits. I've put it to the test with some mixed results. Is this the unicorn shoe that many reviewers are saying it is? Let's get to it. Thanks for tuning in people to check out my review of the Rebel 4 from New Balance. If you're yet to do so, help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button, but also give the video a thumbs up like and drop me a comment below too for the algorithm. Danke schön. The Fuel Cell Rebel V4 from New Balance I've picked up in a UK size 11 and a half, which is a US 12. Very low weight on this one of 247 grams or about 8.7 ounces. That's pretty much bang on the same weight as a pair of the Endorphin Pro 4 or perhaps something like the Alpha Fly 3 for me at least. A slightly lower midsole stack on this one of about 36 millimeters here in the heel and around about 30 millimeters in the forefoot. So it's more like a Takumi Sen type stack, a little bit lower here and the drop is slightly lower too. But that's pretty much where the similarities end between those two shoes. The midsole's a strange mix, this one very rubbery sort of feel. I think there is a bit of Piva type foam in there, but I think it's predominantly EVA. It's pretty soft, comes in at around a short A durometer score of 25, which is well below the average of 28. Does feel a little bit firmer in fairness than the last version of this one that I tried out. I think that was the Rebel 2. That was so super soft and compressive. I didn't feel like it was the sort of shoe I wanted to run particularly quickly in. Of course, there's no midsole kind of additional elements here no plate or shank rubber on the outsole is equally as malleable it comes in around about short a score of 59 i think i normally get about 62 to 70 on most running shoes so it's a little bit softer here this is a very wide running shoe. I've got about 12.5 centimetres of width here in the widest point in the forefoot and around about 10 centimetres in the widest point of the heel. Okay, stats. Well, that's all well and good, but a running shoe is only a shoe when someone steps into it. And that's exactly what I did. We'll start with the upper first. The upper on the Rebel 4 is absolutely huge. No idea why they've used such a gigantic last to create this shoe and put it together. I had to cinch the laces in a great deal here and that created like a dip in the toe box area which wasn't all that comfortable in fairness. And don't forget this is a normal width D. I dread to think what the wide thing version of this shoe is like. It must be absolutely colossal. I can't understand why some reviewers have suggested that this shoe is like a glove in terms of the upper. I can categorically tell you that the worst bit about this shoe is the upper. And it's no real surprise you've got that super wide midsole here. And I think they've just overcompensated for the amount of material here in the upper. Where they've attached it and stitched it to the midsole of the shoe using that strobel. They can't go too far in. You know, it'd just be weird otherwise. The heel counter is quite low profile really. There's very minimal padding back here as well i think a few other reviewers have had troubles there once i did actually get the shoe kind of cinched up i used a runner's knot and the lockdown was actually okay but i think the big issue in the upper is actually these laminated sort of overlays here they're very big and they're quite rigid and they're just not really helping matters they make the upper mesh just bunch up a bit and you don't get a really nice grip around the foot due to those overlays the gusseting also in the tongue it's on both sides and that bunches up as well just around the arch there it doesn't feel that great the laces are okay a little bit of stretch to them again that doesn't really help matters so the phantom fit that we've got in the shoe really is not that at all i think i quite like the material itself it's just the way it's been implemented within the rebel 4 so runner's not an absolute must here if you want to get a good lockdown could i have actually gone down a half size so the shoe would fit a little better well no actually the length of the shoe is perfect it's just the 
overly generous upper materials. I would suggest going true to size on this one. Go with the centimeter sizing. You should be able to get it spot on then. Typically, I have to go a half size up in New Balance and that's what I've done this time. I don't think it would have been any better in terms of the upper if I'd gone down a half size. Just would have been too short for me. I think they could have dispatched with the elastic gusseting that's on either side of the tongue. It's not really doing anything at all for me. I might even try and get rid of these logos off the side. They're just really tacky, I think. I don't like them. They kind of feel plasticky. They don't really feel in keeping with the rest of the shoe. So you can get a half decent lockdown with a little bit of tinkering. You're going to have to get your sock game on point with this one. So that's the upper. I'll give it a two out of three. Probably one of the lowest scores I've given in a while. It's okay. There's just loads of things they could do to improve it. Midsole. Midsole. Midsole now. So in terms of the midsole, it's a much better picture on the Rebel 4. It's a more rubbery type cushion here. Quite bouncy, really. A little bit in the mould of the original version of the Nova Blast from Asics. Not sure I'd quite say it's a daily shoe. For me, it does feel better at the two sort of ends of the spectrum. One when you're going very fast up towards those sort of 10k paces and then also when you're doing that sort of slower recovery or easier running actually it felt quite nice and nimble at 5 or 10k pace or effort for me perhaps like a slightly more resilient streak fly i think if you want a little bit more stack than the nike is offering then the rebel 4 might work for you as i stated earlier there's no shank or no plate here it's just foam quite propulsive in some ways reminded me of the original version of the pegasus turbo the peg 35 turbo i think that's more though the upper materials are very similar to that shoe i think the weird thing about the midsole though it's dictated somewhat by the outsole rubber when you get the shoe on foot initially it does feel a little bit like it's a zero or negative drop i think that's a little bit down to where the rubber's been placed on the outsole here you kind of sink into the foam in the heel somewhat oddly it feels a little bit like the invincible run perhaps without the avert squash of that shoe i never thought i'd be saying that about the Rebel 4. I think the extreme width that we've got here in the Rebel 4 is a little bit off in terms of what people presume it's for. I always presume the original version of the Rebel was like a tempo or higher pace shoe. It was a little bit more responsive. We've certainly got the opposite now. We've got this very wide midsole. I think it's certainly more of a trainer now than anything really. Perhaps a little bit too forgiving in the heel. Too compressive and squashy there to allow me to call it like propulsive or responsive. I have tried the shoe out over a range of different paces, like 8.30 per mile, sort of easy or recovery efforts, through to aerobic type effort around 7.30 per mile, and right up to like 5K effort for like 400 meter bursts. I think the shoe's light enough to cater for practically anything you might want to try with it. It's quite versatile, I suppose, but I wouldn't suggest it's a master of any particular effort level. And with any new type of midsole material, it's always very difficult to actually suggest how long that it's going to last at this early stage. I do, though, feel with this lower stack of the midsole that it may limit the distance range that you could utilize the Rebel 4 within. I just don't think it's going to provide that sort of decompression speed that some people might want for sort of much longer efforts where you're throwing in lots of faster paced sections and some viewers have commented that exact thing on my Strava where they've seen that I've been testing out the shoe I think they have moved the Rebel 4 into a kind of more daily category now you can probably get a little bit more use out of this within your rotation though sometimes it's good to have a specific tool for a specific session otherwise we just end up with a whole load of shoes they're sort of okay at everything and not brilliant at one thing so up to now certainly seems okay but i wouldn't suggest it's going to stand out for me at any particular distance or effort level one point about the insole that you get here stock it's very very thin and it's not stuck down to the actual midsole material which means that it kind of moves and shuffles around there i would advise getting some adhesive and sticking that down spray adhesive is probably the best thing to use here it's a another design and manufacture issue that just sort of lowers the quality of this one somewhat it feels like it's a little detail that's just been missed so okay so far i'll give it a 2.6 out of 3 for the midsole after my initial runs 
outsole now well there's some interesting traction areas here and some quite thick rubber as well going to take a while to burn through all of this the strips through the middle and the sides here do offer some decent depth and i would say it's the best new balance shoe in terms of outsole that i've tried out since the RC Elite V1. Lots of varied triangular cutouts everywhere. You do have some slightly wider cutouts here as well. Fortunately, it's not mounted completely flush with that exposed midsole material. It does stand out and that really does help to improve the grip that we've got here in the Rebel 4. I tried this one out on some wet terrain, quite varied in fact, across concrete and some roads and i found that it worked a treat you got some good toe off grip there though i have found i collected up quite a lot of smaller stones here they sort of wedge into these slots and the jeweler's screwdriver was required to liberate them i think the exposed rubbery midsole foam here will take a bit of a pounding it does seem to have an outer layer on it though with the rubber protruding from the midsole foam i think it will protect it reasonably well i think part of the overall stability of the shoe is hindered though by the curved nature of the way that these rubber sections in the heel have been applied and implemented. If I hold the shoe up here you can see that they kind of sit right on the very edge of the heel. I have noticed a few viewers saying they feel the shoe's just a little bit too compressive and wobbly back there so do take that into account if you're thinking about picking up a pair. So far though aside from rock collecting I think it's probably one of the stronger areas of the shoe. I'm going to give it a 2.7 out of 3 for the outsole so far. Talking value now, I picked these up for about £125 from Foot Locker. They took absolutely ages to deliver and they used DHL who always say they've tried to deliver your parcel when they never did. They're not one of my favourite go-to delivery firms at all. I think for 125 I don't feel too hard done by here, especially with those upper problems. It's certainly not the most refined or sort of clinical shoe. It does feel as if they've made some changes here. Some of them might stick and some of them might not. It does make me wonder what the fit's like on the RC Elite V4. I hope it's not like this one. It's certainly not as nuanced in terms of the design as the Nova Blast 4 from Asics. Not as refined as the Rincon or the Streetfly. I think I could probably get some wear out of these though. Put them into the rotation. Use them for some easier recovery efforts. At least the outsole's on point now. I can utilise them whatever the weather. I also like this colourway. It's not too bright or in your face as that mango one. I mean, if you're going to pick that one up in the UK, it's going to stay clean for approximately one second. Is this one better than something like the equally lightweight Liberate Nitro 2 from Puma? No, I actually think that's a better track shoe and faster pace shoe. It's a little bit more responsive than this, not quite as squashy. I also think the discounted Streakfly is probably a better track shoe if that's what you want. This kind of fits somewhere between something like the Pegasus or the Velocity Nitro 3 and the Nova Blast, though all of those shoes have got a better upper than this. So it could be okay for like track, maybe some easier daily efforts, maybe a tempo run at shorter range, and even some easy recovery. But I don't think I'd pick it for the long run, I just don't trust the upper enough for that over the miles. Maybe they'll do like a midpoint update to this one, like a 4.5, and do something about this upper. So good outsole and midsole, just spoiled by the elephant in the room upper and you could literally fit one of those in there so i'll give it a 2.6 for value at the price i paid for it it's not too bad so if i've totaled the scores up correctly that gives us 9.9 .9 out of 12 for the new balance fuel cell rebel v4 after my initial runs So things I'm going to do, switch out the laces to something a little bit firmer without that stretch. I'm going to glue in that insole as well. I think that could help out. Maybe even put another thicker insole in here to try and negate the sort of overly generous upper materials. Have you picked the Rebel 4 up? How are you finding it after your initial miles? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. For a shoe such as the Rebel, we need a appropriate musical interlude. Coming from the New York Dolls this time with the fantastic Looking for a Kiss. I love the guitar riff on this one and the sounds as well. Certainly a little bit of a Gretsch, maybe hollow bodied 
semi-acoustic electric sound here and brilliant characterful delivery of the lyrics too there's a lot of strut in this one there's a lot of attitude it's got a wonderful rock and roll feel you don't really get this in many sort of modern day tunes everything's all a little bit safe and everything but I don't think there's anything particularly safe about the New York Dolls can you imagine if somebody did like a risk assessment on them he would never ever get through would it can you imagine taking them on tour or something it would have been quite something i reckon the new york dolls would have been quite in with some of the uh, modern running shoes though they definitely seem like some cats that would be interested in the hoka skyward x look at the stack there i'm sure the new york dolls would have put these on on stage would have given them the extra elevation. I will be reviewing this soon, by the way. Go and check out some of the early material from the New York Dolls. I do not think you'll be disappointed. Thanks for tuning in, people. I hope you enjoyed today's review. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up, like, and drop us a comment for the algorithm too. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.